Hi there, my name is Louis Taylor. I'm a composer and a producer based in Bristol. And today I'm doing a quick impromptu video on adaptive video game music, which is a topic that I'm really fond of. And um, I think that it's something that should be explored more often, to be honest. Um, it's quite often ignored in a lot of composition classes just because it's not quite what you would expect to be taught. I think that when you go to composition school or any music school, they teach you a lot about um, the actual music and the theory of it and everything like that. But the adaptive video game music side of things never really gets mentioned that much. I mean, if you're doing a specific game music course or a composition for media course, maybe it would be, but um, I think a lot of the time it's neglected. Anyway, I've done plenty of videos on this before, but I've done I've taken a slightly different approach in this particular piece of music that I'm writing for a video game called Adapt, which I've been scoring for the past almost couple of years, I think. Um, coming to uh, the finish line soon, hopefully. Um, as much as I've enjoyed it and I'll be missing doing the music for it, it'll be really great to have this completed as uh, it'll be such an achievement for everyone involved. Um, but basically, I just wanted to break down some of the aspects of the adaptive video games music side of things within this piece of music. So let's just uh, jump over to Logic and we'll get started on it. So here we have my Logic session. And essentially what we're looking at here is two sections of music um, that have been broken up into daytime, which is coloured in this sort of lighter greeny bluish um, scheme. And then we have the, uh, the nighttime music, which is this kind of darker purpley pinky kind of colours. So um, what we've got going on here, let me just see if I can make it all fit there we go is we have lots of different sections and eventually as you all have seen in other videos if, if you haven't by the way seen the adaptive video game music videos that i've done i'll leave the links in the description but uh, they're really cool and interesting and you should check them out i think that um there's a lot to unpack in there and there's, they're quite long so it'll be really helpful if you want to know more about the subject but um with these, they're broken down into different sections, loop A, loop B. We came up with a, the, the game developer and myself came up with a specific structure to stick to for the game's um, sort of programming so that we could find, he could find it easier to, to develop into the game using FMOD, basically. Um, now, I've yet to put this into FMOD, but this is what it looks like from the logic standpoint. We've got loop A, loop B, an ambient loop, a swell transition, so which is the transition to the swell and then an outro. So the swell is basically just kind of the climax. The swell transition is t to get to that climax, which is all of these loopable, by the way. They're all independently loopable pieces of music, which is one of the nice things about this. You can listen to loop A on repeat with the varying different layers of complexion, you know, depending on what's happening in the game or random variation. Um, or it can play all of them in one go. The idea is that it's very flexible and each one can sort of morph into the next. So we have the nighttime stuff down here and the daytime stuff up here. And just for the sake of my logic, I've got a little spacer track here which I've color coded in orange. And so when you see it all together, it looks like this. We have a spacer and it just means it just helps me separate it in my head. Right. So this is a really interesting track because of the subject, which is the arid biome in the video game. The arid biome, if you don't know what arid is, it's basically like a really dry, almost deserty type environment. Um, it's very similar to the Grand Canyon, that kind of thing, I think. And, and that kind of dry, stony, rocky, craggy environment that's quite often very hot and, and uh, humid, uh, sorry, not humid, hot and dry. So, um, what I wanted to try and replicate in this music, to convey in this music, is that theme of dryness. So, especially in the daytime. So what I'm thinking is, how can I make this more dry? Because basically what I did originally, this is one of the first themes I ever came up with, and it was never meant to be for Arid. It was always just a standard nighttime theme before we worked out the structure of the game soundtrack. And what I've done is quite cool, I think. I've actually changed the microphone positions to be close, mainly, with a little bit of vintage stereo, um, using the Spitfire Audio BBC Symphony Orchestra Pro Library for a lot of this. Uh, same again for the marimba. 
Um, whereas normally I just use mix one basically or and, and add a little bit of close, which is what I like to do. That's kind of my basic basic template um, setup. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated when you start using different libraries, but the same kind of principle is applied where I've got mostly close and, you know, uh, a bit of the tree, whatever, a bit of the ambient, mostly close. And, and, and I've gone in and played around with that per instrument because they all sound a little bit different per library or even per instrument per library. Um, so... I've broken it up into all these different tracks and what it sounds like is is this. So without any reverb at all, it's very dry. Any reverberation you're hearing there at all is just from the actual room recordings that I've allowed to creep in a little bit with the mix. I added a little bit of reverb, which I like to for I'm gonna when I actually output this, out, export it rather, I'm gonna turn this down to about one second and the mix down to about minus 20 d uh, dB so that you basically can't hear it, but just so that it adds a little bit of depth to the sound. <laughs> So we've got a lot of these drier instruments in this uh, daytime version. We've got the xylophone, we've got the marimba. These are classic daytime instruments in the adapt sound world. Um, we've got pizzicato strings. They're really dry. Have a listen to these. They almost sound like MIDI because they're so dry. reverb <clears throat> excuse me so what we've got going on here is um, a little breakdown of the melody which I've put into alto flute shorts I think the alto flute in this um, Spitfire symphonic winds library is particularly dry and <laughs> you know airy noisy sounding and I really like that I, I think that's the perfect instrument for, for for the lead lines on this particular soundtrack on the daytime. Now, um, it's very different to all the other daytimes because they've all got a lot more wetness to them, basically, um, like the forest, for example. Now, what's interesting is that I've not actually taken that same approach with the nighttime. I've gone the opposite, and I've actually gone super wet. So if I... And the reason for that, and I'll explain that. Let me just... I, I usually have this at about 8, put this up to about 3. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I do that is because, in my mind, the arid biome in the daytime is very dry and hot. But at night time, you've got the beautiful open sky and a very purpley blue tint to everything. It's very cold at night, I think. A bit like the desert. So, I mean, it can depend. It varies. It does vary. But uh, I think generally that's how I view things in my mind for this specific piece of music. So... When I think of the night sky in somewhere arid, I think of the fact that you can see more stars than basically anywhere else in the world. There's no light pollution out there because there's nothing. Um, and you can see the galaxy, the constellations. It's beautiful and it's it's very wishy-washy. You know, it looks great. So what I've done is basically made it super wet. Now, this track, the original version, you can actually check out on my SoundCloud. It's just called Adapt Nighttime, I think. Um, but you can hear how it sounds on here with a little bit of an updated instrumentation. idea now what's quite interesting about this is that normally what i do is i create four different bass layers which is what i am going to do once i put it into f mod but they'll I, I like to to split it up normally where i have a bass layer for um basically day and night for each season so uh depending on where it is in the world like for example the arctic there's only two seasons really there which is essentially just winter where it's super wintry and summer which is where it's kind of a little bit less wintry basically a bit more sunny a bit less stormy um so it's a little bit more simple to break down but with this one there's quite a lot of stuff going on different seasonal stuff not that there's a lot of seasons happening 
And actually, it's something that I need to consider in the future about whether to uh, take an approach where I don't have any seasonal variation, the arid theme, because or, or the desert, for example, because it's just so dry. You know, it's it's it basically never it basically never uh, changes the weather there. So it will just mainly change temperature. Uh, you know, there's no trees out there. You won't see the, the the beautiful autumn colors coming through or anything like that or the green leaves. You might get a little bit more greenery here and there. But generally speaking, I think night and day is the best separation. That is very different to all the other tracks, even the Arctic. Um, so looking forward here uh we have a different variation so we have the 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 ambient loop which i can play to you now the ambient loop is just um it's literally what it says so you can just hear that that can loop or it can move to the next section just to give you some context here's what the ambient loop in the daytime sounds like so it's actually very different but obviously it's the same exact you know skeleton of the music So it's important to bear in mind with video game music when you're trying to make it adaptive what you're going to vary, basically. Um, so that's the main point of this video. What are you going to vary? In this particular instance, I wanted to vary night and day more than anything else. But in other tracks, I wanted to vary the seasons more than anything else, as well as the night and day. Um, now you can go even deeper than that and vary the individual instruments and even the harmonies uh, you know you could have three different bass layers for different points in the season or four rather four different bass layers for different different seasonal bass layers if you will you know just a marimba for example in this case um, some bass maybe some other harmonic textural things like the pizzicato and you can change the harmony completely per bass layer, but still allow it to fit the melodies. So if you had a melody that fit all of these different harmonic things, all of these different harmony uh, harmonies in the bass layers, then it would be really interesting because you're essentially playing four different pieces of music that are also the same piece of music and it's, it keeps it fresh for the listener. So it's really worth checking out in that sense. Just to uh, hammer the point home um, with this, you know, difference between night and day. Here's the day in the swell transition. And in the night time, here we are. So I won't bother playing all of the different music within this particular track because there's lots to unpack and it would make the video twice as long. But, as I said, it's worth bearing in mind when you're writing adaptive video game music what you're going to vary, how you're going to structure it, and um, how the track is supposed to feel. Because, you know, this is a very complicated game, really. Um, if you were writing music for sort of a, 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 a I don't know, a cyberpunk um, racing game, let's say, the music wouldn't vary that much other than situationally. So the difference between the two th um, variations is that in this scenario, the variations are not based on the situational um, happenings, occurrences of the game. For example, intensity um, or conflict or lack of health. 
they're based on the external environment. Um, that's one of the main things we're doing. Now, that is an entirely different story when it comes to the conflict music in this game because there is conflict, but that's a different side of the that's a different side of the coin which I'm going to show at a different point. But that's that way of varying it. With it, whereas with the cyberpunk racing game, for example, you're probably just going to be varying, you know, the last lap or you know whether or not your car's about to be blown up if you take another couple of knocks that kind of thing where the drums start coming in a bit faster or there's another synth layer or an electric guitar there's a distortion gets turned up anything like that you can automate it all in these programs it's a very powerful technique uh to be able to use and it's something that i think should be explored more as i said earlier interactive and adaptive video game music is a really really interesting and unique way to experience music um i'm a big fan of austin wintry's way of doing things and 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 uh joris Deman, of course um their games and their music is really great at this kind of stuff you should definitely check out their music and austin wintry has an amazing youtube channel definitely check him out he's actually spoken quite um a lot about this subject so if you're interested check him out as i said what are you varying? Why are you structuring it? How are you structuring it? And how is it going to feel? Bear those things in mind if you're going to write adaptive video game music. I hope this video was helpful for you. It'd be great if you could drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe and ring the notification bell for more content so that you can stay in tuned with my uh, YouTube channel. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.